Hello, hello, and welcome to the Introverted Manager. Today we'll be talking about how to display multiple currencies in Power BI, as well as how to make sure they are not summarized together. Let's dive right in. Let's see what we have here. Basically, it's often the case when in your fact table, specifically when it comes to finances or sales, uh, anything that has uh, amounts, it can be the case that you will have multiple currencies in the same column. When that happens, if you put the amount field into a table visual, what will happen automatically is that Power BI will summarize those numbers, even though those are different currencies. Therefore, summarizing it doesn't make any sense. There are a few things that you can do here. First thing is to display car currency symbol, and I will show you how. And the second thing, what you can do is actually tell Power BI not to summarize those numbers if there are multiple currencies involved. This is called semi-additive measure. Basically, it means that it calculates only for certain dimensions. In our case, if it's the same currency, it will calculate or summarize it. If those are different currencies, different dimensions, it will not. Let's see how to set it up. And actually, first, I will show you an example how it, what we'll see in the end once we finish setting it up. So let me add sales amount measure that I did here. Oops, my bad. And that's what we'll get in the end. As you can see under Czechia, I have two currencies, Euro and CZK, Czech crowns. And as you can see here, appropriate currency symbol is displayed within the, the cell. But if we go up on a country level, because there are multiple uh, currencies involved, it's actually not summarizing it, but showing you multiple currencies. Or you can specify some other text to show in those cases. Let's see how it's all set up. So first, this is my fact table with those sales transactions. Nothing special, but what we will need from here is currency and amount. Right. Now, besides that, I have currency format strings table, which has countries, currency name, currency symbol, currency code, and format. Format. This is the dynamic formatting that we will use to format our numbers. Um, let's go back to the measure itself, and I will show you how to set up dynamic formatting. So first thing that you need to do is choose your measure or choose your field that you would like to change to dynamic formatting. And you will go to measure tools, format, and here, instead of decimal number or whole number or currency, whatever you have there currently, you will have to choose dynamic. Once you do, you will have new uh, pop-up appearing on the left where you can choose between measure and format. So switch to format, although it will do it for you automatically. And here, this is our custom formatting for that, for this measure. Let's see what it does. What it does is it retrieves selected value, associated value from currency format strings table format field, and we'll get to that. And if it's unable to do so, it displays multiple currencies. That's what you see on the country level or region level. This is what we need for it not to summarize when it, uh, when it has multiple uh, currencies involved. Let's go back to the table. Or actually, I will show you the model as well. 
For selected value to work, you need to set up relationships between formatting table and your fact table, sales table. The relationships are as follows. So official. So in my fact table, I have currency field, which is basically, let me switch to sales, which is currency code. Sometimes it could be different. You can either have currency code or you can have currency symbol maybe, uh, or you can have uh, country, it depends. In my case, I'm matching or I have cur currency code associated with each transaction and therefore I'm using that to match it to appropriate currency symbol. So I have, uh, unfortunately in this case, many too many relationships between sales table and currency table. This happens because in my case, in this table, I have both countries and currencies combined. For example, in European Union, multiple countries will have euro currency. That's why I have many too many. In this specific case, in my case, it's not an issue, but be careful with that. It might be a good idea instead, narrow down your table to currency symbol, currency code and format and delete countries. That way you will have less duplicates. You can clear out duplicates and leave just unique values. So, and in this case, make sure that your fact table filters currency table, currency format table, because we need to retrieve appropriate currency code from currency format table. Once you do that, Let's review formatting options. Okay, as you can see in my currency format table, I have format field. For dynamic uh, formatting to work, you have to provide Power BI with template. How do you want to format your field? Here I have three strings for positive numbers, for negative numbers, and for zeros. Hash symbol is responsible for optional number. Basically, it will display number if we have it or not, if we don't have it. This is the thousand separator. If we have thousand, ten thousand, it will display a comma. And for decimal points, we're using dot separator and we're showing two decimal points. Therefore, you can adjust it however you want. Here for negative numbers, we're showing minus sign before the number. It can also be brackets in case it's an accounting uh, report. Again, you can adjust it. And for zeros, again, you can adjust how you want to display it. Could be the same format, could be the different format. And you have to provide Power BI with those three strings. Or you can provide it with just one and therefore it will uh, format everything using that one string. What I do here is I'm taking currency symbol from currency symbol uh, column and concatenating those three strings into one. That's what I have in the end. Let's take euros. So we'll have for positive numbers, we'll have euro symbol displayed in front. We'll have thousand separator and we will have two decimal points. For negative numbers, we'll have minus sign in front and zeros are formatted the same as any other number. This is what happens here. And let's go back to our 
table visual. And this is what we get in the end. Make sure though that you have currency field within your rows, because if you do not, what happens is that for all of the countries which have multiple currencies, what you will only see is multiple currencies instead of actually seeing the numbers. So at least give opportunity for your users to drill down more to currency level and see actual numbers. That's why I have currency here. So I can drill down to that level and see specific currencies. And because in that table we had summarized numbers, let's briefly have a look how it's formatted when it's not summarized. As you can see here, those are positive numbers. Negative numbers are formatted with minus sign, as I told you, and zeros are formatted in similar fashion as any other number. You can remove decimal numbers for not, uh, zeros or you can leave it as is. It's up to you. And that's all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next one.